Good afternoon. Um, muscle activity on pedal forces. Do they matter in cycling performance? I think in a very interesting question. Um, first, I love these, uh, these pictures. Why? Because uh, I think it's important to uh, uh, to see the cyclist uh, with a machine. The cyclist on his bike maintain a very special relationship and uh, if uh, I can say uh, he's both a master on the motor, I think uh, maybe uh, the cyclist is like a, a sort of a centaur. Um, why a master? Because uh, he produces movement according to uh, is a central nervous system, uh, piecing strategy. Uh, a motor, because um, is different functional systems, uh, can produce power output during the exercise. And I think that uh, the bike is like a torso braid. It must lay, lie between the legs, ready to fly. It must be part of the cyclist. And uh, uh, when uh, the cyclist uh, make this circular movement, uh, you see that uh, the, the heel uh, is very dynamic and uh, uh, the during the whole the pedaling cycle, the movement of the, of the heel uh, in, uh, oh, the movement of the heel um, permit to uh, to uh, to see that the pedaling is not a natural gesture. Um, there is not frailing fulcrum in cycling because the movement is uh, circular. Uh, it's not like in uh, uh, to uh, for the the, the runners. Uh, it's very, very difficult to apply a um, very effective force on the, on the pedal, a very good direction, uh, a good level, according to the, all the parent cycle. That's required to orient and adapt the level of force during all the anterior pedaling cycle. Um, the change in, in muscle activity on pedal forces is uh, due to the regulation of the power output when the cyclist uh, make an, uh, an effort. And the different uh, variables uh, is uh, well, well known about that. Uh, for example, intensity of the effort is very important. Everybody knows that. Uh, pedaling cadence is very important. But there is uh, also another important parameters. First, the position on the bicycle is very important. Uh, this position, so the seated position, classical position used when the, the cyclist make endurance effort, uh, is very, very important to have a maximum of comfort on the bicycle. When you take this position, we uh, apply a certain level of force of the, of the pedal, but when you want to take another aerodynamic position, uh, the aim, the goal is not the same. In this position, the goal is to speed very, very uh, important, very important speed to overcome the resistance of hair, the drag resistance. Also, the, uh, this coach position uh, involves two different applied force on the pedal. Another important position is the, this standing position when the cyclist is in, uh, in climb. Uh, in this position, there's a lot of uh, oscillation movement at the, knee, at the level of the pelvis on the shoulders. And the applied force on the pedal is the sum of the muscle power on the right power. Interesting, interesting situation 
is this situation when the rider exercise ride on the cobbles. Um, there is a, there are le uh, less race in, in the cobbles, just pa Paris Roubaix on the there, uh, on the Tour de France the next week. But in these conditions, uh, the vibrations uh, plays an important role because uh, the, um, the, the, the shocks between the, the cobbles on, on the wheels uh, uh, introduce uh, different vibrations up to the handlebars on the sailor. So uh, in these four classical po positions, the force opposing the motion plays a very important role for the muscle activity on the uh, application of, of the force on the pedal. Uh, the wind, very important, because uh, to ride, to exercise against the wind is not the same thing to exercise uh, in, the, in the mountain to climb with the weight. It's not the same thing. Uh, to uh, produce uh, three on the watt uh, against the wind and to produce the same level of power um, in, uh, uh, to climb, it's not the same. It's, it's the same power, but it's not the same exercise uh, for the rider. The rolling resistance is very important here. And uh, the, the, weight, the weight of the rider plus bicycle is, uh, plays an important role in the climb. The different uh, mechanical uh, friction of the, of, the, of, the, of the part of the bicycle plays also an important role. Uh, when I, um, I take the holistic system as cyclist on his bicycle, it's important to take into account the level of power like these equations. There are four important levels of power. The first is the power to overcome the higher mid drag of air. The second, the PO to overcome the potential, so the weight of the cyclist on bicycle. Um, PO to overcome the rolling resistance, very important on the cobbles. And PO to overcome the friction of the different uh, mechanical part of the bicycle. But we can also consider the pedaling system here. Hey, when you take into account the, the system, uh, you, uh, it's now important to um, evaluate the force applied directly on the pedal. The muscle of force is here. This, this force applied on the pedals is not always effective. The effective force is the red, is the, the green force. This is the force perpendicular on the crank that permit to, uh, to um, turn the, the gear to create power output. This force in, in red in, is ineffective, is a radial force. Uh, to optimize the mechanical effectiveness, the cyclist must ideally to increase the effective force and decrease this radial force. But the problem is that like the power output in cycling is the product of these three parameters, effective force, the length of the crank, on the uh, angular velocity. But this effective force, the problem is it's impossible for the rider to have a constant level of this force during the pedaling cycle. It's not possible. So according to the different technique of the cyclist, <coughs> according to the different um, situation, the cyclist must try to optimize this level of force during all the pairing cycle. So it's possible after to, uh, to plot the, 
the, the level of force, the level of torque, the effective force according to the different angle of the pain cycle, and to measure the muscle activity of the muscle during these different situations, different conditions. Um, the PO and the heavy metal condition determine the muscle activity and the mechanical effectiveness. So if I um, take the, this position, the climbing position, it's important to consider that when the cyclist is in, in this position, uh, there is different oscillation movement on the shoulders or in, on its pelvis. Um, at this level, you have potential on kinetics energy. This energy is very important on test stream to transfer the force on the pedal. It is uh, an additional energy uh, store in the in the in the pelvis and uh, in the in, in the trunk with the with the weight of the of the rider to uh, to to make the sum of the muscular muscular force on the 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 weight of the riders so according to the different techniques of the riders you have different different level of force on different di direction of force uh, it's important uh, for the to training it's very very important that the riders uh, can train in the mountain to optimize the pedaling techniques for example if uh, a rider uh, produce three on the watt the total resistance is approximately 60 newton for a uh, effective force of 200 newton. It's not the, the same level of resistance. At this level, we can consider this system. The more important uh, force to overcome, the resistance to overcome, is the, the weight of the riders on this bicycle. Look at this high row rolling friction is less important. For example, uh, to um, um, five, uh, one, one kilogram, one kilogram on a slope of 7% is approximately four, five watt to produce. In a flat condition, the wind is a problem. It's a very, very great problem because there, there are athletes, there are cyclists, they are very easy for, for them to ride on flat terrain with the wind. But for others, it's very, very difficult. Very difficult. It's not the same thing. Why? Because to overcome the resistance or air is not the same thing. Uh, here, the opposing resistance total opposing motion is 26 newton for always 200 newton it's not the same thing if you take now this position aero position aero posture the wind is always important but the cyclist try to minimize this the higher drag of hair uh, to tilt his, uh, his trunk here the total resistance is less Oh. Always the same force applied on the pedals, but less, uh, less resistance opposing motion. So to adapt to pass this position, this position is not the same thing. For the same level of force on the pedal, you have the, not the same level of resistance opposing the motion. On the system, holistic system, is here the more important Resistance to overcome is the higher make drag. The other resistance are more imp uh, less important. Ah, uh, the cobbles, the great problem for the riders. Great problem. When the riders ri uh, exercise ride on the cobbles, you have uh, an important vibra vibrations due to the shock between the, the ties and the cobbles. 
these vibrations, vibrations go towards the underbass, on the saddle. The next speakers, William Bertucci speaks about that uh, after me. And uh, actually, we try to measure these uh, vibrations on the bike and on the rider. It's very interesting for the future. Um, if I take the, always the same level of force of the pedal, effective force, always 200 Newton, uh, the, in, this, in this posture, in this condition, the riders, the opposing force is 3, 5, 30, uh, 35 Newton. And the holistic system show that uh, the more important resistance to overcome is hunt higher than drag on rolling resistance. Here, the rolling resistance is very, very important to overcome. So, um, the, the, the company we uh, built a bicycle, the trainer, the, the riders must work to, uh, together to try to have the better bike, uh, the, the best um, uh, me mechanical property of the, of the bicycle, the wheel, the tire. It's very, very, very complicated. It's not very simple. Um, just to, to finish, it is the question of this symposium. Uh, is muscle activity on the pedal forces, uh, do they matter in cycling performance? I, I think, uh, and uh, I, sure, sure. According to a lot of variables, a lot of parameters, the positions, the nature of the, of the terrain, the intensity of the effort, the pedaling cadence, vibrations level, pedaling techniques, training level, environmental condition, and another, another variable. Uh, I think uh, now um, I will present uh, the next speaker, William Bertucci. Uh, he speaks presentation about uh, vib vibration on cycling. And uh, he came from the University of, uh, of uh, Reims in France. And uh, his uh, topics, his uh, uh, research uh, is uh, mainly on the biomechanics on cycling. Yeah. of this presentation is first to show the effects of the vibration exposure on the health, secondly to show how it is possible to measure the vibration exposure during cycling, third to show the effects of the vibration exposure on the performance and finally I propose solutions to minimize the vibration exposure in cycling. The vibrations have several effects on the hills, on the comfort of the cyclist, and on the cycling performance. Cycling, cycling on uh, cobblestones correspond to the extreme condition on vib of vibration. The stage number four of the present Tour de France has a 15 km long stretch of cobblestone section. It is possible that this could be one of the key moments of the Tour de France. Each year, each year uh, there are several historic competitions with cobblestone in Belgium and uh, mainly Paris-Roubaix in France with 55 kilometers of road with cobblestone. Cycling on cobblestone is an extreme condition but it is not the only one condition with vibration. Cycling on, on uh, rough road involves also a vibration exposure and uh, it is the main condition in cycling. 
Vibration exposure in cycling can have acute and chronic repercussions on the health of the cyclist. These repercussions can be localized on the upper limbs, especially on the ends, with an increase of compression of uh, the median and uh, ulnar nerves. The repercussions of vibration exposure can be localized on the fingers with pain, uh, decrease of the grip stress, and dexterity. The chronic effects can also be localized on the neck and back with different pathologies. To prevent these symptoms, so standard and guidelines have been developed on the world of work. We compute the amount of vibration dose from the accelerometric measurements with this equation, taking into account the vibration vib frequency of the measurements. Thanking this. <coughs> from this data, it is possible to measure a daily vibration dose acceptable during eight hours of work. We applied this uh, computation in the cycling condition. Concerning the hand arm, the daily exposure limit value is uh, 5 meters per square second. From 2.5 to 5 meters per square second, it is the caution zone. Concerning the whole body vibration, this corresponds to the vibration exposure localized on the pedals and on the saddle. The daily exposure limit value is 1.5. 15 meters per second square. Now, we present to you the vibration exposure during cycling, the extreme, extreme condition on the cobblestones. Um, this data is from the experimental study on arm vibration in cycling. The measurements were performed on the world with cobblestones. The accelerometric measurements acquisition was performed with the Oros device. The triaxial accelerometer was disposed on the stem of the bike, on the wrist of the cyclist, and on the elbow and clavicle. Before the test, under real conditions, a model analysis is realized. A shock MR is used to reveal the normal <coughs> mode of the bike. <coughs> In this slide, you can see the resonance frequencies of the bicycle. If the bike is solicited to, th to the to specific frequencies, the energy of vibration and thus the deleterious effects will dramatically increase. Our results show that the exposure dose is very high. According to the standards and guidelines of the world of work, the maximal acceptable duration is only 7 minutes at uh, 35 km per hour. In comparison, for the Paris-Roubaix race, the duration with the cobblestone can be up to 1 hour and 30 minutes. The, analyze, the analysis of the transmissibility of the vibration is done from the ratio of the RMS value of the accelerometric measurements on the upper limb and the RMS of the accelerometric measurements on the, on the stem of the bicycle. When the ratio is above one, that, signif that signifies that the input vibration is amplified. This amplification can be due to the resonance phenomenon. You can see that it is the case above 16 km per hour for the wrist. You can also see that the transmissibility decreases from the wrist to the clavicle. <coughs> the amplification is maximal above uh, 20 km per hour. In this study, this speed, this speed corresponds to 38 Hz. This frequency corresponds to the resonance frequency of the wrist. You can also note that this frequency is close to one of the resonance frequency of the bicycle measured during the model analysis. These two phenomena increase dramatically the vibration exposure on the upper limbs of the, of the cyclist. 
To decrease the vibration exposure and potentially decrease the deleterious effects of the vibration, the resonance frequencies of the bicycle must be different from the resonance frequencies of the hand, arm and our body. Other experimentations have been performed on the cobblestone section of Paris-Roubaix on recre recreational cyclists and on professional cyclists of the FDG.com team. In these experimentations, we have instrumented the stem and the seat post of the bicycle. We have performed additional measurements using an instrumented groove. This groove allows the localization of palmar pressure during cycling. You can see a lower pressure during the velodrome condition and uh, the higher level of pressure during the cobblestone conditions. You can see that the, on cobblestones, the height level of pressure is lo localized on the fingers. <coughs> this is in line with the practical observation. After the Paris Bay, a lot of cyclists have injuries on the hands, especially on the fingers. Our result confirms also the very high level of solicitation of cyclists in such conditions, with 100. 25 meters per square second for the saddle and uh, 98 meters per second square from the handlebar. <coughs> in such conditions, the maximal time authorized in the work of road is uh, only four minutes. You can uh, see that uh, the cyclist of, uh, on cobblestones has, have a very hard amount of vibration compared compared to the work condition with hammer drill or perforator. Our results also show that the choice of the type of tire, the type of wheels, and the uh, inflated pressure can significantly influence the amount of vibration dose. The objective is to optimize the conditions and find the best compromise between comfort, rolling resistance, and performance. Now, we talk about the effects of vibration on the energy expenditure and performance in cycling. Sperly Sheol have studied the physiological and perceptual responses on, of adding vibration of, to cycling. They have found that additional vibration significantly increase the, the oxygen uptake. <coughs> Finigri et all have uh, also studied the effects of uh, vibration in cycling on a specific algometer called the power bike. They have uh, confirmed the result of Sperlish. Me mechanical waves transmitted to from the pedals into the lower body will activate a great number of vibratory sensitive muscle receptors. As a result, a large number of additional motor units will be recruited leading to greater muscle activation and uh, oxygen uptake. This uh, result suggests that vibration exposure can increase, for example, uh, for example the grass efficiency. Samuelson et al. have studied the influence of vibration on the time to exhaustion at constant power output during four tests with and without vibration conditions. The results indicated that time to exhaustion with uh, vibration was significantly lower than the without vibration condition, and thus that the additional effects uh, affect the additional vibration affects the performance. It is possible to reduce the deleterious effects of vibration on the performance. Lepin et all have studied in different laboratory conditions the effects of the on, on of the end position on vibration. Three positions on the handlebar and two angles of wrist were studied. The result suggests that the drop position induces higher uh, vibration exposure than the two other positions. Concerning the force, <coughs> the, the force induced on the cyclist, it is the breakout position that gives uh, the lowest strain and the top position that induces the highest strain.
The best compromise seems to be the breakout position. In, in another study, Lepi and Eol have uh, determined the influence of the different parts of the bicycle on the vibratory absorption and thus on the comfort of the cyclist. The objective of their paper is to assess the relative contribution of the bicycle components on the vibration induced in the handlebar and the seat post. <coughs> the results indicated that for the ends, the component that has, that has the highest influence is the fork for 24% and the wheels for 15%. Concerning the seat post, the, uh, the components that have the highest influence are, are the wheels for 42% and the frame for 28%. Concerning the comfort, the wheels have a significant importance. In conclusion, we have seen that uh, vibration exposure on cobblestone is very high and could have its consequences for the cyclists. Vibration exposure can involve an increase in muscular activation and in uh, oxygen uptake and thus decrease the, the growth efficiency. This alteration decreases the performance of the cyclist. It is possible to reduce the vibration exposure and improve comfort using specific bicycle components such as wheels, frame, fork, tire type, pressure and fashion, gel pads under the tape of, on the, of the underbar, front suspension fork. And it is possible to, to limit the vibration transmissibility using a specific poster. Thank you. Thank you very much, William, for this interesting presentation. I want now to introduce Sébastien Duc. Sébastien came uh, from the same university that uh, William, University of, of Reims in France. Um, he works about biomechanics and cycling, and especially on the muscle uh, activity. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, before beginning, I would like to congratulate the organizer for the quality of this uh, second edition of the World Congress for Science. And uh, thank you very much, Louise and uh, James, for having invited me and my colleagues for this symposium. So I want to present to you the main result of the most recent cycling studies focusing on muscular activity in order to improve cycling performance. Firstly, how we can measure muscular activity during pedaling. Most studies uh, have, uh, most research have studied the muscular activity with uh, electromography recording from the motor unit recruited during a muscle protection. To detect the IMG signal, it is possible to use wire or needle in the trod with inserting them in the muscle or to use surface electron of the skin of the muscle. Most studies prefer the second technique. Contrary to intramuscular EMG signal, the surface EMG signal is considered to be more representative of the total muscle mass involved during pedaling. But wire electrode can be used to detect the activity of uh, some muscle very depth of thin muscle such as sporas and peronus lateralis of the leg. As you can see on this figure, the, the EMG pattern of muscle activity is very similar between the, the two signal, EMG signal, but we can observe two additional period activation with the surface EMG signal. However, this change can also be due to the signal cross talk from the adjacent muscle activity, which can be detected with surface EMG. 
Using uh, the keyword EMG cycling, pedaling on the sole, we can find over 500 reference in PubMed. So I have to, to do a selection. And I want to present only the main result of the most recent study, which match some set criteria, notably the recommendation for the Sunyam for recording and processing the surface EMG signal. And also all, all uh, the other criteria which can you see here. So firstly, I want to present to you the muscular coordination during pedaling. To pedal, a cyclist can recruit, uh, recruit six monoarticular muscles, indicated in red on this slide, and six biarticular muscles, indicated in blue. Several other, muscle, several other muscles play a secondary role for pedal, but they are rarely studied. They are indicated at the bottom. On this slide, you can see the curve of the EMG pattern activity during the crank cycle for the main muscle involved during pedaling. These data were obtained in 20 cyclists uh, who ride on a seated position on a loader ergometer against a power output on 20, uh, 250 watts on a, with a pedaling cadence of 99 RPM. During the propulsive phase in red, all the muscles are activated except the tibialis anterior here. In contrast, during the recovery phase, there are uh, only the hip and uh, ankle flexor are recruited. Here, here, here. Uh, during the bottom phase transition, it is, uh, we can see, it is a uh, gastroniamus on the hamstring we are recruited for bottom phase transition, whereas during the recovery phase, it is only it is uh, top, so, sorry, it is during the top dead transition, it is rectus femoris and the tibialis anterior. The four phases of pedaling are slightly shifter during the crank side compared to phase uh, which is common uh, used for analyzing the pedal force because the time delay between the muscle uh, excitation and the muscle force production must to be taken uh, take in account. Uh, several may, uh, studies have reported similar uh, EMG pattern across uh, numerous studies. Uh, it has been shown that the intersubject variability between the variability of EMG pattern between subjects is more important from the articular muscle yeah, and the ankle muscles. As you can observe, it is possible to, show, to observe two different EMG patterns from tibialis anterior and biceps femoris, even if the cyclist uh, did the same task. Many studies have shown that the EMG pattern, despite the intersubject variability, many studies have shown that the repetitivity of the EMG pattern for God's uh, crank muscle is uh, very important for whole muscles. It has been shown also that the, the EMG activity timing is very good for all muscles except the tibialis anterior. However, several studies have uh, reported that the level activity was uh, less, uh, was less uh, reliable between test stations, notably for rectus femoris and gluteus maximus. The pedal movement is, uh, the, is the result of the activation of three pairs of muscle group antagonists. The first pair, the extensor and flexor group, propel the crank during the downstroke and the upstroke, respectively. During the downstroke, the second pair, composed by hamstring and gastronomus, are co-activated to transfer to the pedal the force, to transfer to the pedal the force produced by the extensor. These muscles are so activated for performing the bottom dead transition. And the third pair, composed by rectus firmis and tibialis anterior, are recruited during the top dead transition. It has been shown that cyclist seems to be seems to use the same muscle synergy for pedaling during a submaximal exercise or for perform a loud sprint. All the factors that can potentially change the timing of 
on intensity of muscle activity are presented here. This factor can be gateway in five categories pertaining to exercise, bike, subject, terrain, and body position. In blue are indicated, uh, in red, sorry, are indicated the factor that have a great influence of EMG activity. In blue, the factor that have a small influence, and in black, the factor that I want to present now. So firstly, I want to present to you the influence of cycling experience on pedaling techniques. The effect of cycling experience is apparently unclear. While uh, one study observed no significant difference in MG activity between cyclists and experienced cyclists or non-cyclists, another study has shown that cyclists seem to recruit more their biceps femoris muscle when they pedal with a higher cadence. And it seems that uh, this change can elevate muscul mus uh, muscular work of contralateral extensor muscle. Despite their uh, similar level of experience on uh, training, professional cyclists uh, seem to recruit their muscle in. Uh, d d sorry, d despite their uh, similar experience uh, on training uh, level, professional cyclists. Don't seem, don't seem to recruit their muscle in the same way to pedal. There is a very important heterogeneity of uh, EMG data in professional cyclists. Recently, a study has compared the EMG, uh, the leg muscle activity between a trained cyclist and a novice cyclist. As you can see on this figure, the EMG pattern of tibialis anterior, gastronomus anterior, and cellulose are more variable in novice cyclists. And the time activation of this muscle is also much longer. Therefore, the co-activation time between the antagonist muscle is more important in novice cyclists. So, this result seems to indicate that muscle, leg muscle recruitment is less efficient with novice cyclists. And probably, training can, can improve the muscle recruitment on this efficiency. The effect of uh, cycling experience could be related to the pedaling technique of the subject. When cyclists use a plantar flex pedaling technique, we can observe an increase of EMG activity of bicep femoris. In contrast, when cyclists use a dorsiflex pedaling technique, it is the EMG activity of gastronomus lateralis which increases. This pedaling technique uh, involve also a slight decrease of gross efficiency uh, because it limits strongly the pull-up action during the, the upstroke as it uh, locks broadly the ankle. The pull-up movement can be trained if cyclists receive, uh, can be developed if cyclists receive uh, visual feedback about the pedal force production. In this study, the authors have uh, shown that the index of force effectiveness can increase slightly. This change can be related to the explain why the muscle, uh, muscular activity or rectus femoris and biceps femoris activity increase during the upstroke, and this activity can decrease vastus lateris and rectus femoris activity during the downstroke. Uh, the, the, pedaling mo the, the pull up action can be developed using a uncoupled crank like power cranks. In this study, the authors have shown that uh, the, uh, the activity of uh, several uh, muscles, notably the flexor muscle, increase greatly during the upstroke, while the activity of extensor muscle decreases. Similar change I have observed after a training period with a uh, power crank, but uh, the change disappears quickly when cyclists will use a normal training. So, the question is, further uh, studies should focus on the effect of long-term training with power cranks. So, just want you change slides. I just think we're running a little bit behind schedule, so I propose we just overrun by about five minutes, if that's all right. Five minutes? Yeah, so, can I give you, do you think you could manage with that small, I know it's a small amount of time, but <laughs> if, if the slides you've got left, we will make it otherwise. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well. <laughs> 
Uh, I want to present uh, now the effect of non-secular chaining. Many non-secular chaining are commercially available, but uh, several studies have shown that uh, when cyclists use this uh, kind of uh, chaining, we found no effect of no, no change on the uh, maximal power output, maximal power to max, gross efficiency, and time to home performance. Uh, even, uh, nevertheless, two studies have observed a slight increase of anaerobic performance when cyclists uh, use uh, water cooling during a brief all out exercise. Uh, I skip. Uh, no. Uh, recent studies have also shown that uh, and also reported no change of EMG activity when uh, mountain bikers use uh, the cooling crank. Uh, so despite, uh, even if no study have clearly reported a significant improvement of cycling per performance, the latest two winners of Tour de France use for training and competition the osimetric crank. According to the manufacturer, this ring could improve the cycling performance by 10 percent. This is the truth of the myth. To give an answer, we started to study in our lab the effect of uh, osymmetric ring on muscle, on uh, muscle activity, peak crank torque, and gross efficiency. And it seems, it is polymeric result of only fruit subject, that this efficiency can, uh, that gross uh, efficiency can slightly increase with the osymmetric ring but we found no change in EMG activity. These results are in line uh, of those uh, reported by a student of Fred Bike last year, since they observed only a slight uh, improvement on 2.5% of time trial during, uh, uh, of performance during a 20-minute time trial. Uh, during climb, cyclists must overcome the slope, the, the must overcome the force of gravity due to the change of the slope and can adopt a standing position to climb. In the past, we observed no change of EMG activity level when cyclists uh, ride on the treadmill inclined up to 10%. Similar results are reported by Leon Cadwell, but two studies have observed an increase in global, global activation of low volume but for high gear slope. A recent study have, comp have uh, I've also shown that EMG activity is modified during uphill, but only for higher slope, slope for equal to 20%. And they also show recently that the change, this, uh, the, the change of EMG activity can be counteracted if cyclists adopt a more forward position of the saddle during uphill, very steep uphill. And that's why mountain bikers during competition, which must overcome very steep uh, slope, uh, adopt this uh, forward position. During standing, in contrast, there is a very important uh, modification of uh, timing of on the uh, EMG activity, notably of the muscle crossing the hip on the knee, uh, on the knee sensor. <coughs> and it is interesting also that, uh, to note that during standing position, the muscle activity of upper limb and trunk is very increased. This change can be related to the shift on the increase of the pedal force production during the downstroke and also on the suppression of the saddle support. So, we have uh, shown also that the muscular coordination during standing position at the right is very different <coughs> compared to cyclists pedal in seated position. And this result indicates that cyclists must train in standing position if they want to be more efficient. To conclude, uh, uh, the, um, the pull-up action during the upstroke uh, can allow to recruit more hip, hip and knee <coughs> transfer muscle and alleviate the work load of uh, extensor muscles. This active uh, pedaling technique, which is for me the best, must to be learned by beginner and new cyclists as it is usually done in other sports like swimming. But why in uh, school uh, cycling 
the younger cyclists don't uh, learn to pedal. It is a very important question. I have ever learned, learned to pedal in the past. Uh, the effect of uh, non-secular channeling seems, uh, uh, if there is an effect, it is a very little change. And to conclude, we have to need some future study. In contrast, when cyclists use a standing position on a higher position, the MG activity is very modified. And if they want to be performant, cyclists must do training in this extreme position to be more efficient. And first perspective in, in the future, as my colleague uh, said you, it is a uh, very interesting to study the muscular activity during extreme cycling condition, like cobblestone. And uh, in our lab, we have started to study the effect of mechanical vibration induced by the vibration plate uh, under the front wheel on muscle activity of lower limb, but also of upper limb. And it is a preliminary result. Uh, we found an increase in uh, EMG activity when mechanical vibration was added. But uh, the greatest increase of EMG activity doesn't occur at the same vibration, uh, f uh, vibration frequency for all muscles, for example, the soleus here and the vastus medialis. And this change seems to be related to explain why oxygen consumption is uh, slightly increased when mechanical vibration was added. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your attention. I think it's not possible to, uh, to question because uh, there's no time now. Sorry. <laughs>